Let's do it. Alrighty. Here we go. My name is Marty Fox from White Fox. Now, here's the deal. Well, welcome to another episode of WTF with the Fox with myself. Marty Fox, no Shuri this week as I am in Perth visiting the boys Ryan Smith and David Murray, sales directors of White Fox WA. So good to be here. Welcome onto the podcast. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Feels weird not having Shuey with me. <laughs> but anyway, this is good. We're in the penthouse of the Ritz Carlton, which, um, fuck, this is pretty insane. Impressive. We thought that we were going to be given a little suite uh, downstairs and they gave us the keys to the top floor, which is spectacular. Um, I've had 24 hours now in town visiting you guys and the team. How's, uh, how's it all going? How many weeks in are we now? Ooh, what are we, 12? Not even, not 10, even 12 10, weeks. 10 ish, yeah. 10 ish. I, I kind of say second week of Jan mm. was, was launch week. So, so, yeah, around 10 weeks. So, I just did the, um, the episode on expansion, obviously, spoke about how you reached out. Um, and really, you instigated this whole expansion. You know, you are the one that has made this really happen. And it's been an incredible journey since you know Q3 or Q4 last year. Talk me through um, and unpack it. Say from the very beginning, when when did you first think that this could be an opportunity for you? Um, timing, yeah, timing point. Obviously, Q4 last year. Um, I guess obviously certain things happened in in my life um, to I guess force me to spread my wings. Uh, obviously, I'm an extremely sort of loyal person. So um, it's something happened obviously behind the scenes where I previously was to make me sort of open my eyes and actually have a conversation. Um, I think the first time I messaged you was literally that first message where um, obviously mentioned, threw it out there to see if you were uh, interested in coming to WA and got a pretty quick rejection. Um, but obviously we had a, had a good conversation after that. And here we are today. It, um, it's weird because it, if, if, it feels like it's been a lot longer. Oh, it feels like it's been years. Yeah. I mean, and the reality is November, December, January, February, March. Like we haven't even known each other for six months, but yet we're collectively running a team here, a, a beautiful team totaling 16 people. Mm -hmm. And there's been over 40 transactions, which is essentially connecting 80 different people's lives with property and what's so interesting about it is that you said it before and you, I, I actually heard you say in a meeting today that we had with a developer client where sometimes again another one of Tommy Panos's best lines sometimes you know the best news comes poorly wrapped and you know you have to have adversity to be able to get to a, a new level whether that's in health or relationship or finance or something bad needs to happen and for you, that came towards the end of last year, but how quickly you were able to pivot and try and think yourself out of that situation is why you're here today. And for a lot of people, sometimes when these things occur, you just gotta look at it from a different angle because it can open up a, t a totally different life. What, are, what have you enjoyed s so far? I mean, and I would love for both of you to answer this, for, and, and this would help so many people out there that have gone from being an agent to then all of a sudden you're responsible for so many people's futures. How have you adapted to that? How, how did you have the skills to do that? And are you learning as you go? Talk me through the, the process of now leading a team. Yeah, well, I had small sections of leadership in my previous role. So, um, and I've always enjoyed it. I've always actually got more joy out of the people around me succeeding rather than myself, um, which is sort of, it's, it's fun. Even David at Real Mark, um, our previous employer, and, and with the other reps there, it was, uh, it was exciting to watch these young guys come up and now he kicks my ass, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's all right. Um, it, it's it's fast-paced, it's, it's non-stop. Like we've obviously got 16 in our team now. It, there's always something to do. There's always a conversation to had. Um, but I, I guess that's just the way my brain works. It's sort of go, go, go. And, and, and how did you land on the, I mean, obviously we've recruited people from so many different businesses. You know, some have come from uh, Real Mark, some have come from- Ray White. Ray White, uh, Belcourt, um, 
Paragon. The agency. The agency. Uh, what else? We've had people that have come out of their own businesses. Uh, where did Chelsea come from? Property Chelsea came from the property exchange. So we're talking over, say, seven or eight different agencies, and you've got so many people in such a short amount of time. Is that because of your connections with these people, or was it the fact that you know White Fox was coming into an environment like WA where it just it was different? You know, how, how has it happened so quick? I think. Probably the latter is the primary reason. I think that the, um, the magic around the brand is what attracts good people to, to our work here. I think we were talking about it before, you know, bad eggs get caught out pretty quickly due to culture. You said it at the lunch today, most important thing in, in the workplace is purpose and culture. And I think that um, the people that work with us that we didn't know of previously were attracted to the brand and just amazing people that in an industry that you otherwise would have looked at and gone, it's just a competitor or it's someone else that's trying to make a living to then be a part of a, a team together and, and look at the, the different number of businesses that we've all come from. I think that's a result of the brand and, and what you have created over several years. And what's quite funny about um, getting it going was that there's so many things that we as a brand stand for, like having two people on every negotiation, two people in every listing, two people at every close, like trying to ensure that nothing's done alone. And that was quite a hard thing for a number of people to sort of wrap their heads around, you know, the sharing of commissions, the sharing of data, not having, you know, ownership over a particular area because that's your core patch. I mean, you can focus on an area, which is totally cool, but not being closed off to that cross pollination of multiple parties in the same areas. I think that's unlocked our potential and our power as a brand in WA. It's very different how you guys work it, obviously in Vic compared to WA, but I reckon it also, it also isolates the type, what the type of person is. So some people, if they're like, absolutely not, I do it by myself, well, they're showing their true colors. They're not really a team player. So it does, I guess, um, it does bring forward their true traits. Um, but it's, I think even the people and that- Is that in the interview process or how, how do you see those traits coming through? I, I think the more now we've obviously been through it, we've understood it, we've worked together, we've worked with the reps, we know the positives, the negatives and everything to it. We can explain it a lot better in the interview process, but it's, it's been up front with them obviously from the front and seen, seen nearly how do they react. Everyone's always good because they're excited. It's the honeymoon stage, the first instinct where they're jumping into it then it's actually going, okay, now it's here. Now chuck that person on the listing. Even us, like we've had conversations and trying to get our head around certain things going, oh, like really, is that how you do it? And then you start to see the benefits of it, having that extra agent on the front door so I can be inside and having those conversations, booking those further appraisals, actually selling the property rather than being a glorified name taker on the front door. It's just like changed the game. You book so many more appraisals, you get a better result for your client because you actually get to focus on their product and your teammate helps you out. And guess what? You're gonna help them out. And that's the thing. It's like, I've always had this saying growing up that half a pie is better than no pie. And by sharing on deals, it actually opens up more dialogue, more live training, more opportunity, more a high level of service for the person that's actually attending that open or being in that listing presentation. Very rarely will you meet with a potential vendor that's just one-on-one. -on -one. There's normally always two people. So you should be rolling in pairs, even just in the general chit chat when you're being shown the property, having two parties privy to that experience is always going to elevate the experience for the customer. Well, look at the Regent Street auction. Adam and I had dinner with the clients the other night at La Rebelle in Mount Lawley and for them to look through the lounge room window and to not only see you call a fantastic auction, but to see Ryan with, with the successful bidder, to see Adam with one of the underbidders, to see myself with one of the underbidders, to see Bianca scribing, to have a team of agents who are just getting their hands dirty uh, in the public forum, I think is pretty special. Not a lot of agencies would call an auction on a Saturday and have their staff members around them, helping them when they don't actually have any benefit to the deal getting done. I think that's the biggest thing that I've seen in terms of the buy-in, yeah. is that they collectively, your team collectively want to see this brand succeed yeah. because they know that if you're winning, they're winning. If they're winning, we're winning. It's, it's, like a, it's a really common thread that as long as we're winning as a team, that's all that matters because that's how it's set up. Um, 
and talk me through the process of actually getting it operationally <laughs> up and running. There was a shitload of hoops to jump through. Some late nights. You know, there was licensing <laughs> issues, there was building issues, there was renovation issues. Talk us through some of the highlights and, and some of the low points where you thought, fuck, <laughs> is this even possible? Well, you became a building supervisor <laughs> and all of the above for, for 12 weeks. Yeah, it was, it was intense. It was, uh, well, it was probably five weeks, really, yeah. from where to go. Yeah. Well, it's any, any, any advice I can give is don't try to do a renovation over Christmas and New Year and everything. But, um, and recruit. Yeah, and recruit. And try to... Oh, on your house and your business. Yeah, yeah God. No, it was intense. But it was, once again, it's like, I, I love to be busy. We, we all love to be busy. It's just the way it is. And if something needs to get done, you get it done. If we have to build furniture, you get down there with a couple of Allen keys and pop a bottle of whiskey and have a whiskey and bloody build some bloody chairs. So. And, and, and you really sort of stuck to particular lanes. That it wasn't sort of predetermined, it just happened organically. Mm. Like for instance, you were extremely strong on the revenue side of things. You got, you got down and dirty and you were able to set up some pretty key listings very early on. Mm. And you were obviously helping a hell of a lot with the renovation. And you and I did a lot of recruiting meetings together. Um, obviously you were recruiting as well, but you knew that you were able to bring in a lot of the revenue that we needed off the bat. Um, and you were just incredible with being able to set up really strategic meetings with the right people to sort of fit the jigsaw puzzle together of personalities. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many meetings we had here at the Ritz downstairs. It was just, it was meeting after meeting after meeting. And what I loved was just how much respect you guys had built within you know, the micro market of agency. How people spoke about you guys. I mean, how old are you, Ryan? 33. 33 and Dave? 26. 26, the respect that was built up from these operators of other brands, they knew of you and they were so excited to, you know, not only be with White Fox, but be led by guys that were really at the top of their game and doing some really, really solid things behind the scenes. How did it feel to see these people sign on and go from, you know, running it, say a team of one or two to seeing the bind of these people that were believing in you guys? How did, how did that feel? I remember sitting in a cafe with Matty Wells at the end of last year. And we, neither of us had resigned yet, uh, but we had that conversation of, okay, we've got to do this. And uh, it feels overwhelming at the time, letting other people down, but the excitement to go through that journey together and then to have Matty come out of the gates firing like he has and put away contract after contract after contract on his own two feet, to see that confidence in that man as an operator over such a short period, for me, cements everything about what we've done being as euphoric and elating as, that, as it has been and only a sign of things to come in the future. I think to be able to share that with other people on the journey is what makes White Fox more special than anything else I could have How cool was it in the sales meeting today? Um, which I loved being able to come over and run the sales meeting and just see everyone just, you know, delivering, you know, delivering the results that I think that they knew that they could, they could do mm. and, and actually see it occur in reality was phenomenal. Like Maddie Wells mm. selling that property, never having even been to the property, like just stitch the deal together just by connecting the dots and having the confidence to be able to piece that deal together without even seeing the property. I mean, you couldn't have seen him do that eight weeks ago. No. Could you? No. I think the, the confidence for an agent, from a rep's point of view, that comes from having the backing of not only your personal brand and professional brand, but Shu, Taylor, you know, your mum. I remember when I came over and, and we did the deal and, and we were all excited. Linda gave me a FaceTime call. I was in the IJ buying, buying bog roll uh, and we had a 45 minute conversation. And I think you know that when you, uh, when you become part of this team, there's a whole team in Victoria, in NZ, soon to be other places around the world um, that want you to succeed and will do anything for you to succeed. So talking about connecting with the other people, what was it like in December, pre-launch, flying over to Melbourne for the Christmas party yeah. to connect with the people in New Zealand and Melbourne and see everyone that you'd obviously you know, followed for quite some time. What was it like actually being together with everyone? What did you learn from that experience? It was, 
was very uh, natural, to be honest. It was like you, you sort of go over there thinking something and then you're like, oh, they're, j like, they're just good people. Like they're just good people that want to, like someone like Lana or Takasio, like these, uh, Pete, these people that are so busy doing what they do. And they're like, let's face time whenever. Doesn't matter, just call us. If you need help, call us. So it's like people that are genuinely just bought in. Once again, it's like culture that you build to where you can lean on these people. We don't always have to lean on yourself. It's um, if we want to, if we, we want to call Linda, you can literally call and call your mom. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty um, special, special business. It's, it's, it's so out there. You put yourself so out there in White Fox that everything's online. You're obviously very big on social and who you are to where the point you actually can't hide who you are. So it's like, you, you can't fake it in this business. Like you can't, I think if, if that bad egg does ever come in, it, it gets pretty much found out, kicked out very, very quickly. And it's um, when you're so true to your morals and who you are, it's, it's pretty cool. Like you, you know you're on the right bus. Absolutely. So t take us through, how did you guys connect? How did, how is it that Ryan Smith and David Murray are leading the charge of White Fox in Perth? How, how did this happen? Um, I'll start very short and sweet and just say the interesting thing about this partnership is we were never the best of friends, always respected each other a lot. I looked up to Ryan as a leader at our previous employer, which he evidently was, uh, and always just respected his ability to um, lead by example, but also put a lot of time in away from his day to day to help others come up, which is pretty rare in the real estate industry, um, in brands outside of White Fox. And uh, the opportunity came about obviously from you two having a conversation. Um, I wasn't meant to be the original man in this chair, as, as I'll let you two talk on a little bit further. Well, what happened in, in, that, in that first FaceTime when I first met you? <laughs> Because that's quite a funny memory. That is quite a funny memory. Uh, I'd idolized you for about seven or eight years and I was like, holy shit, get to meet Marty Fox. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? Driving to the golf club, nervous as hell. And then we get on screen. A secret FaceTime in, at the golf club. At the golf club. We get on screen with a few of us and um, you're there with stumbles. And the first thing you do is you look at all of us across the screen, you <laughs> rotate your head and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait. <laughs> Who are you? And who are you? <laughs> and, and very politely followed by that, you introduced yourself, you asked who I was, and then you said, get out. <laughs> well, I was confused because I was prepared to meet Ryan and some other bloke yeah. that was apparently due to come into the business. Yeah. And then- Well, can I say, you were always, you said you weren't meant to be in that chair. You actually were, because that was the first time we actually met him. Yeah. And we brought, it was, we were looking to potentially do obviously a residential and a commercial aspect and it might have been just a miscommunication in terms of who we bringing in. So you're always, you're always the guy that was meant to be there. It was just the fact that maybe in that first conversation with Marty, I probably didn't tell how many people that, I think there was five there at the end. Five there, and I thought I was needing two. So I was like, sorry guys, can you three please leave the FaceTime? And then we'll, we'll connect at a later stage. Um, still very funny. But it was polite. It was very polite. Oh, it wasn't like, can you fucking leave the room? It was. No, but it's a reflection of who you are. Cause I think, you know, you, you give yourself to everyone and you have a window of opportunity to discuss this concept and this notion. You want to hit the nail on the head and you were very polite. You, you introduced yourself. You asked a little bit about who the remaining members of the, the FaceTime were. But for you, it was like, all right, if we're going to talk about business, let's, let's stick to the agenda of what we had itemized. Absolutely. And that's the thing. It was, it was a meeting that had an agenda. And um, what wasn't on the agenda was um, the presence of three people that I had no idea was going to be there. <laughs> okay. So that was a very funny start. Um, and then what happened? It, it just sort of, things changed. Things changed. Yeah. And you've got to be nimble. 100%. 100%. It was um, there... Yeah, I, th I think for, for the group that were there, there was different sort of options. There was a lot going on in the background that you might not have pre like known about. I think, I, I think one of the first messages to you, I was explaining that there is a lot of moving wheels behind the scenes. Um, in my head, I sort of knew which direction I wanted to go. Obviously, there was people there that hadn't made that mind up yet. Um, and then with regards in David, I think it was just, like you said before, like I've always... One thing my dad always said is like, if you're ever gonna like go into business with someone, you go into business with someone that has different skill sets than you. There's no point me and him having the exact same skill sets because what's the point? 
he can cover me. He's a prospecting machine. On the phones, he's unbelievable, but well, that's not my strength. He's one of the best agents I've ever heard on a phone. And that came from that last trip. Do you remember we were driving somewhere? <laughs> he was in the back seat cutting a deal and I was looking at you like just with like, I was tearing up thinking this is like listening. This is like someone that loves opera listening to Andrea Bocelli. And I'm such a, a lover of the game of real estate that I'm listening to David's silver smooth velvety tongue cutting a deal in the back seat that was just like you were hitting every note. And I was looking at Ryan going, this guy is unbelievable. And it's so true. Like I've very rarely heard someone on the phone as good as you. And if there's any agents out there, reach out to this bloke because you can learn a lot. It's very kind of you. But then in, in, in turn of that, you're speaking about our strengths and the ability for you guys to sit in front of someone who may come with a rather large set of tools and a big resume, the ability that I've seen you guys to find out that person's why and what's motivating them to potentially have a, a change of um, home for them is, is a skill that I think you, you either have or you don't and, and you two absolutely have that. Mm. Recruitment and, and listing are very similar. They, they, they require you to be able to listen and challenge, but challenge in a way that gets people thinking. Um, and running real estate businesses, it is all about the right recruitment. Um, and you can never get it right all the time. But you, you, you need to be prepared, particularly, you know, in Perth, you haven't had those issues yet, which, which will come when there'll be something that you can't fix or you'll let somebody in that um, it just is the wrong call. And, you know, what I've seen over the last eight years is just so many ups and downs. But the one constant is that over time, you do continue to collect great people. Yeah. Good's just good. Yeah. But there is a very, very big increase within the business of great people sticking around. And as time goes on, good will become great. And you'll also luck in from time to time and great will land straight away. Mm. Like I know that there's two particular people that are starting in the next few weeks and they are coming in as great people and they'll go from great to greater. You know, they're not coming in as, as good. And the key as a leader is to turn good to great, good businesses into great businesses. And it's, it's a very hard thing to do. It takes work, it takes attention, it takes care, all those different things to, to be able to nurture it to the point where it, it is a self-sufficient beast. You get asked this quite a lot, especially in the last month. Why Perth? I think for, for an outsider's perspective who never knew you before, it always seemed too small or too west, you know, as something that was probably not in the sight of a very, very successful entrepreneur who had achieved a lot in his career at an early stage. Um, why Perth? in Q3, Q4, 23? That first FaceTime, I think was quite key with, um, with Ryan. I mean, you know Ryan, you know that he's, he's probably, my mum said that he's one of the most similar personalities she's ever met to me yeah. in terms of intensity. I think that's the right word. Um, Ryan's attention span, Ryan's attention span's actually quite short like mine, but if we care about something, it can be very long-term. So we're long-term planners, but we'll give you short-term attention yeah. because we're already rolling onto next. We're juggling so many balls in our own minds that we've only got a very short window to be that intense and then it gets shifted. So the intensity doesn't drop, but the attention does. And he captured my attention. I've never heard someone explain it like that in my head. I'm like, Fuck, that makes so much sense. Yeah. There's so many bowls. You're like, you've only got a little mouth. Which is really odd for a scratch golfer <laughs> to have such a short attention span because I get on the golf course and I want to get the fuck off there as soon as possible. So that's probably the, why I never actually made it. <laughs> just, I couldn't get to the 18th hole. Oh, about 14, I'd just clock out. <laughs> but the thing, the thing with that first <laughs> FaceTime was how sold I was on Perth because he, he pitched the opportunity, the ability to really change the game over here. And, and, and that's a big part of branding. You actually wanna see other companies do well as well. For me, that particularly, maybe not other business owners, but I actually wanna see people adopt some of the things that we're doing like they have throughout Australia and, and increase the level of 
finesse that this industry can do, you know, because it's an easy industry to get into. It's easy to just be okay. It's hard to be very, very good at this. And I think if we're making marketing better, if we're making systems better, if we're making culture better, then it, it needs to, you know, it needs to, to be across the, the, the board for the industry. So he was the right guy to, to really spark my interest in WA. He could have been in, in Zimbabwe and I would have thought, shit, maybe is there a chance of, because he captured my attention. We will never look at a map and go, oh, we want to go here, we want to go there. The growth of White Fox has to come from the people within the business. And the way that it's structured is we've got HQ, you know, we've got, you know, finance and legal and marketing and social and all those things happening in the hub. Yeah. But these JVs that we're building are, are, are being led by the people that have equity in the growth of the business yeah. and believe that what we're doing is different. Yeah. <clears throat> we do the basics very well. Yeah. Old school real estate, we nail. Yeah. We follow up, we call, we rock up on time and we can call a bloody good auction. Yeah. That's the basics. Don't try and get fancy if you can't nail the basics. But the things that we are fancy with or different or stand out on, I feel that we are in a league of our own. And it's the people like Ryan and the people like Mike Lana and Pete and the people like Kate Fairmaid and the future sales director that starts very soon in Auckland that want to continue to drive that difference. So YWA, Ryan Smith. And now it's not just Ryan Smith. It's Ryan and David and the team that now embody that same belief and vision. It all has to start from someone to crack the code. It starts from someone to open the conversation. Because a lot of the time it hasn't been me that taps someone on the shoulder and says, hey, what do you think? Yeah. People are reaching out to us and we're making an assessment and we're, we're, we're starting a business. I think you're very good at that because even in the couple of conversations we've had about long-term future, you're obviously very calculated and you're very adaptable, but I think what you're very good at as a leader is staying present and not overcomplicating what next year or the year after or five years from now could bring, but rather nailing today. Being present is obviously extremely important, but getting too caught up in the future will also be your biggest downfall because you'll lose sight of the present. All right, so you've got to take it step by step and have an idea of where things can go, which is why it's so important to get your planning right, to get your shareholders agreements right, to get your understanding of where things can go right, because everyone's got different skill sets. Like there is a reason why there's, you know, seed funding in a company and then you've got mini exits here and then you've got mini exits there and you've got, you know, second round of funding and all these different things that occur within business. The business will evolve, the roles will adapt, the vision can actually change. So if you were to ask me two years ago, would we be in Perth? Even had if we had that conversation and he had sold me, it probably couldn't have happened. Because two years ago, we didn't have the HQ to support the growth. So life and business is all about timing. And that goes for your friendships, your, your relationships, your business goals, your personal goals like, you actually have to stage them out so that they are achievable. Two years ago, had I said, oh, we're gonna be in this state and that state and that state, it's too grandiose. It's too big of a goal. And that's where everyone falls over in their goal setting. Two years ago, if I had said to you, hey, do you think you're gonna be managing 16 people? You would have been like, what are you talking about? What do you fucking mean? Whereas now you say, hey, do you think you can manage 35 people? You go, well, of course I can. Because I've got the best partner in the world here, in Ryan. I've got the best HQ and support. We've got a game plan, we've got a vision. We, we, we know how to execute. So you level up when you're around people that have no glass ceiling. The moment you lose that roof and you're in that convertible, well, you see the sky. That's what happens. On, on HQ and um, whilst we're mentioning it, I think we need to also compliment your brother and Shu for all the effort and, and hours that they put in with Caitlin and, and Stumbles for the, the launching of a brand when Stumbles was getting married. <laughs> Mul Sorry. Multiple weddings. Multiple weddings. weddings. School holidays. Yeah. Christmas. <clears throat> Christmas. Businesses were shut down. <clears throat> so the big thing with getting a business off the ground and, and applauding these people, it's someone has to do the grunt work. Someone has to do the legwork. 
who films the team bios, who makes these, these new staff members feel valued. They want to build profiles. They want to get their message out there. They want to get their profile into the communities that they want to target. That takes time and effort. Dougie behind us on the camera here. You know, it's, it's a collective effort. It's the scripting, it's the locations, it's the past client testimonials, it's the suppliers. I remember Taylor flew over here with Shura. I just had my gallbladder removed yeah. and suppliers weren't returning calls. Yeah. They had to fly here to knock on the doors to get skeleton staff. And the moment a lot of these companies knew that it was White Fox, they wanted in. Yeah. So we saw, that, we saw that there was that value in that profile. Yeah. And to get something off the ground, it actually takes, they say it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to build a company. Mm. And, and literally we had the village to do it. So again, two years ago, Marty Fox can't do it. Yeah. I, I, I cannot run this company. What I can do is I can communicate the vision, I can coach sales directors, and, and you can lean on me for advice, the same way I lean on you for certain things. And, and the biggest thing is making sure that HQ is there for our team. That's what it's about. Yeah. Because if HQ is not there, well then who's there to do the stuff behind the scenes? We, we as a collective would have to hire all these people here in Perth. Yeah. And it's like, well, what do you need to do? You need to find the Perth version of Stumbles. You need to find the Perth Marty. You need to find the Perth Taylor. Perth version of Stumbles doesn't exist. <laughs> He's a one of one. If he does, please call us right now. <laughs> the big white rhino. So, and I love the fact that, you know, it's, they're, they're not people that you just know by email signature. You know these people by name. You know their partners. You know their interests. That's the beautiful thing. And, and we spoke about it today in a meeting. Big, big business is scary. All the red tape all the hierarchy, yeah. small business is scary. You got no money. Sitting in a zone of medium business that's growing, that is nimble, that doesn't have all those issues that we've all experienced in the past with big business is a really nice place to be in. Yeah. Um, so what about some of the funnier moments? The real belly tickle moments. There was, um, there was the day of doing the biggest deal in our life to date. We were in uh, Melbs and we got the red carpet treatment from you. MCG, Channel 9 car to take, Channel 9? Yeah. Channel 9 car to take us straight through to the, uh, the Channel 9 staffing um, entrance into the G. Uh, the dinner, some of the dinners, Ricky Ponting was at one of those dinners. Where, where you took us to in Melbourne. He was at the restaurant. Uh, I think that that story probably solidified for you boys that Perth's also big country town and pretty, uh, pretty humble. And we just met people in, in our life that we never thought we would have, let alone, you know, coming to an agreement to, to be able to fly the flag. And um, we, we, we had a few vodka Red Bulls that night. We were a little bit dusty the next day for, for all of our learnings. I don't think I spoke the next day. <laughs> I know, he, he, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't shut him up on a FaceTime. This was the day to go through everything operational and he thinks he's got the biggest hangover of his life. That, that, that day, I say it to this, that day changed my life. Yeah. You haven't been drunk since that day. I don't like, it literally changed, but I never want to feel that bad again. It was just like, I've, we've all had our fun in the past and everything like that and it was, it felt like I like let myself down. Not that it was all chill and it was all fun and we, we knew what we were doing. But ever since then, I was like, I never want to feel that bad again. <laughs> I was, I'm fun. done. Parked it up. Even at the Christmas party, I was quite tame. Was you were you were? So so talk me through <clears throat> White Fox Perth mm. over the next say six to twelve months. What what do you see? I definitely see the second office. I, I think right now we're we have 16 in our first office and that first office was designed for 16 people. Literally, I know. So it, it, and, and it was designed to have 16 people after a couple of years of operating. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's, I think Perth has a real opportunity. Um, it's just trying to find the right people, the right locations. Mm. But I, I think by the end of the year, we would need to have another lease at least locked in place, looking to, to launch, like you said before, in that sort of early, early next year. Well, this is a call to action to any commercial agents out there in WA. You find the right beautiful little shop, yeah. hopefully heritage, yeah. 
in a great blue chip location, Cornicite. you know who to call, corner site. <laughs> you know who to call. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and, and I can see that as well. I mean, that's, no, that's not that grandiose in thought. It's, it's a very good goal. Um, and it also gives people within the business an opportunity to, to, to spot talent, to, to, to spot opportunity. Um, because obviously the more curved boards that are up with solds on them, under offers on them, collectively, the more successful we all become. Yeah, absolutely. What, what do you see for the next six to 12 months? I see a lot of growth um, with you guys, just in terms of, of leading teams and hopefully managing um, people's goal setting, making sure that they're achieving what they want to achieve. You know, they're working for a reason. Being eight to 10 weeks in, it's not long enough to, to really have those celebrations. But I think you'll start enjoying the fruits of your coaching labor and their actual labor bringing together those types of moments yeah. um, and and when you start seeing those it's it, that is an amazing feeling because obviously you get the adrenaline of cutting a deal yeah. we all know that getting a listing getting a sales fantastic but when you see the lot but that's that's two to six weeks of, of work when you see six to 12 to 18 months of coaching of a staff member and they achieve lifelong ambitions within that period that's something that you can really hang your hat on and be proud of and that doesn't get plastered on social media that doesn't get spoken about in a linkedin post that is internal and it's those internal wins that help you produce the wins externally so i think that's what i'm looking forward to um, because that's going to be a direct re reflection on on what you guys are able to do in the day to day you know we can help you obviously with the things that are you know three six months and very you know high level type things but you boys are driving that day to day and you're helping people achieve some of those big dreams that they all had once as a as a, as a kid there's um there's just so many opportunities and this is the cool thing with this industry doesn't like there's so many different paths obviously literally today launching buyers advocacy arm there's it just gets conversations going you get people going it's opportunities there. It's just, it's a never ending cycle of- but how's that? You know, we had so many meetings to try and get a buyer's advocate in amongst. I mean, we are in a market that's got an average days on market of sometimes under seven, two, or, eight. seven or eight days. Yeah. And buyer advocates are going, oh, you know, is it a conflict of interest? We don't buy our own stock, mm. but there are buyers on our files that are frustrated that cannot negotiate against an agent. They are getting trumped. Yeah. An agent will out negotiate a buyer every single day of the week. Yeah. So what do we do? We try to hire an advocate in Perth. We failed. We could not convince who we wanted. So we thought, fuck it. We'll get Marty Fox Senior in Melbourne. We'll get him licensed in WA. We'll fly him here once a month. Day, day one, he's got three leads. Day one, he's got three leads that he's about to sign up. And you don't physically have to be there to negotiate. Court cases are now being done via Zoom because of what happened in COVID. And they realize we don't need to take up the court's time by having all these different courtrooms full and backlogged when we can actually have a court case done via Zoom. Yeah. It's happening right now as we speak. So if you can send someone to prison or you can find someone millions of dollars in, in whatever it is that they've done wrong, via Zoom behind a, an iPad, well, guess what? You can also negotiate a property via FaceTime. You can have one of our team members, like what we discussed today, inspect the property to vet the findings and one of us three sign off, obviously if I'm in town or you guys are here, on that property being a suitable purchase. So again, we failed at something or it was perceived failure. We took a different course of action. We cracked the code. We flew senior over. We got him his license. And today, as you said, he's got three leads. And so that's what business is about. That's what growth is about. Cracking the code. And when someone says no, well, you need to find another avenue to say yes. Yeah. That's it. But also the power with um, the origin of White Fox being from Melbourne, Victoria, I have found in listing appointments and just general discussions with vendors and buyers, the, the credibility that comes from us being associated with a Melbourne brand 
born and raised is huge because I think everyone in the Perth market, whether you're a consumer or a vendor, you recognize and look at Melbourne as being one of the, you know, um, uh, the originators of how real estate or business typically is done in Australia. And I think I'm, I'm seeing it with a lot of vendors and a lot of consumers. I, I think it's the respect that Melbourne has on an probably not international scale, but certainly on an international scale, we sell more property via auction than any other city on the planet. So in terms of our understanding of the game and the toing and the froing and how it needs to be done, Melbourne does have that, that title. So, you know, people think of branding and, 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 you know, London, New York, and, you know, big companies and the thought leaders, that is a, a, a truthful statement. But particularly when it comes to real estate, Melbourne is a bit of a mecca. Yeah. Um, it may not have the most expensive properties like Sydney, but it certainly has the curriculum yeah. for real estate greatness. Anyway, mate, uh, we could talk for hours here, but I think we should probably wrap it up. It's been amazing to unpack. Thank you for uh, tuning into another episode of With The Fox. David Murray, Ryan Smith, we've got a dinner to get to. Thank you so much. Loved unpacking it, and I'm sure it won't be the last. It's been a privilege. Thank you. Oh, nice. Thanks, mate.